We will build a simple client UI that will run in the browser. On the back end, it will only interact with our smart contract. Before starting, let's make a clean redeploy of our smart contracts from yesterday. Create a new directory called client that includes the index.html and main.js files. For the HTML, we'll start with a simple skeleton file and some bootstrap classes. For serving our project, you can use any web server. We chose HTTP server that's available as an npm package. Install it with npm install, then go into our client directory and run HTTP server. We start with the most basic thing, checking balance of an address. First, add an input field for entering the address. Place this in the container div. Below that, we'll add a panel with a button for checking the balance. The HTML by itself won't be doing much. Let's head over to our main.js file and start interacting with our smart contract. First of all, we must connect to the network. That's done with the Web3 library that we need to import in index.html, just above the main.js import. Back in main.js, this is how we instantiate the Web3 object. Next, we need to copy the ABI of our smart contract. ABI stands for Application Binary Interface, which contains the full interface definition of smart contracts. Basically, it defines all the input and output types of all functions of the contract. When using Truffle, ABIs are generated in the compilation step and are part of the JSON files in the build folder. Head over there and look into dailytoken.json. The first key is the contract name, and the second is the ABI. Just copy and paste this into a variable in main.js like so. We must have the ABI definition in order to initialize our smart contract type and tell it which function it has. Next, we instantiate our already deployed smart contract from its blockchain address. This address is the deployed address of the daily token contract on my local network. Yours will be different. This can be seen in the output of the truffle migrate command. That finishes up the setup phase. Now we can write our check balance function. As you can see, the actual call to the smart contract function balance of is exactly the same as the calls we did in the truffle console. No surprise there, since the Truffle console is a JavaScript console. Now, connect the check balance function to the click event of the check balance button. We have a minimal working web app that interacts with our smart contract and uses no backend at all. Now, let's send some tokens. Add a new HTML form with input fields for sender and recipient addresses, the number of tokens we want to transfer, and a button to execute the transfer. Your form should be similar to this one. In main.js, write the send tokens function. It accepts the two addresses and the amount to transfer. Then it makes the call to the transfer function, quite similar to the call we did in the console. For the last parameter, it accepts a callback that gets executed when the transaction is finished. Then, connect this function to the click event of the send tokens button. Let's try sending 19 tokens from the contract owner's address, which currently holds all the tokens, to another account. After hitting send tokens, you should receive an alert that says address has 19 tokens. To make sure, let's check the balances of both addresses in our check balance panel. The owner's address now has 19 less tokens, and the recipient address has 19 tokens. I don't like having to manually check balances. We'll add a timer that will check the balance for the given address every second. Also, let's remove the alert line from the send tokens function. So now it looks like this. Now let's set the owner's address in the check balance panel and send some more tokens to the other address. As you can see, the balance now updates right away. However, we can do better than this. Let's set up a proper washer for transfer events that will update the price only when a transfer happens, instead of running every second. We need to listen for transfer events that change the balance of our address. This means listening for events where our address is the sender or receiver of tokens. To listen for incoming transfers, 
we need this filter. For outgoing transfers, we need this filter. But to listen for both, we need two separate listeners, or one listener that catches all events and does the filtering afterwards. We'll go with the latter approach. First, comment out or remove the set interval bit from earlier. Now, add a button called Listen for Transfers that creates a listener for the address entered in your address input. Add this button in the first panel footer next to the Check Balance button. As a first draft, let's create a function that will log the event result. First, we get a handle for the events from our specific contract instance by passing an empty object to listen for all events. Then we call the filter.watch function that receives a callback function as parameter to handle the events. This callback uses the error first ordering of arguments, where the error is the first parameter and the result is the second. The first parameter will be undefined if there are no errors. For now, just log the event data. Let's try it out. Then we can test this. As expected, we get the first log, transfer happened, followed by the event data. We get a lot more data than we need. Things like block number, block hash, transaction hash can be useful in other contexts for determining the order of events. For now, let's focus on the task at hand. The values we are interested in are located in the arguments key. Let's go back and modify our listener function. Here we get the event data from results.args and then check to see if our address matches the sender or recipient addresses. If true, then check the balance again and update the HTML of the show balance element with a new balance. The error handling part can stay the same. For testing, get a new address that doesn't have tokens transferred to it yet. Just as a reminder, you can get all accounts with web3.eth.accounts in the Truffle console. Open the developer console in your browser. Now set the new address in your address input box and click listen for transfers. You should see listening for transfers to and from printed out in your browser console. Now send tokens to and from this address. In both cases, the balance will automatically update. Also make a transfer that doesn't include our address. You should see no change in the balance and no logs in the console. Currently, we are only using transfer events as signals to refresh the balance, but we are making any use of their data. Let's create a balance sheet containing all outgoing and incoming transactions for our account. The event listening logic we have so far does not include past transfers involving our account. It only detects events that happen after the listener has been executed. We need a function that can collect all transfers for an account from the deployment of the smart contract, even before the registration of our listener. First, let's sort out the HTML part. Add this HTML as the last element in the container div. This should look like this. The balance sheet is split into two labels, incoming and outgoing transfers. Also, we move the listen for transfers button down here. Let's head over to main.js. We need to write a function that will get all transfers for our account, even the ones before our watcher or web app were created. First set two global variables to hold the transactions, then write the get pass transactions function. Like before, we get the transfer handle from our deployed contract, filter by our address as the from sender parameter, and also pass in a second argument that will get the events from the first block to last. On top of this call, we chain the get function that fetches all events from the blockchain, filtered by our conditions. Finally, in the callback of this get function, we have an array of all events matching our filter. Now we save these events into our global objects, NTS and OutTS, using their unique transaction hash as the key. This is necessary because once we register our watcher, it would generate some of the events that have happened. So there could be duplicates in our table. To avoid this, we use the transaction hash as a unique key storing our event data. We need to repeat the same thing for our incoming transactions. Here's the complete get pass transfers function. Both of these operations, fetching outgoing and incoming transfer events, are asynchronous. We need to wait for both of them before rendering our tables. That is why we make use of lodash and its after function. This line creates a function called load at all that when run twice executes the render tables function. The render tables function parses our stored event data and populates the tables.
Create row is a helper function that generates a new HTML row using event data. It creates a list of elements and then merges them, which is simply for better code readability. Also, we need to update the create event filter function to append rows to our tables when new relevant events are detected, and keep updating the balance. We are using a function we don't have called update balance. We'll extract the logic for updating the balance of the main address into this function. Then, this function will also be used in the onClick handler for the check balance button. To tie everything up, we need to update the onClick event for our listen for transfers button that has an ID listen address. Here's that event listener in the document.ready section. And don't forget to add the lodash import in your index.html file. Here is the full JS import section at the end of index.html. Today we got plenty of coding practice, as we covered lots of ground. We built a front-end web app that can check balances, make transfers, listen for events, and show all account transactions, using only blockchain as a backend service. This helps us get a better picture of how blockchain technology fits into the ecosystem of the modern web.